everyone. I hope you're having a good day today. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Susie and my channel is Light Fragments Oracle. I have some items that I want to show you before we get into today's video. Firstly, I received the cotton makeup remover pads last week that are going in my 24,000 subscriber giveaway box. There are two in this package. The next items that I want to show you, I purchased these from Timu. Now, this is kind of a funny story because I vowed several years ago that I would never wear an open shoulder shirt. Never. It would either be a tank top or a t-shirt. But <clears throat> I've been watching people that wear these tops and it actually looks really nice on them. And I thought I could pull that off. So I purchased four of them. Actually, one of my customers gave me one. And I started wearing it and I thought, wow, I am a lot cooler than when I wear a t-shirt. But I still have the feeling of wearing a t-shirt, but my shoulders are open. And so this is the first one that I purchased. I'm wearing it now. I love this. I love the V right here and how the black extends onto the sleeve. And then V's also on the sleeve. This is the first one. The second one that I purchased is from a different company. And it has a floral pattern to it. I wore this to visit my relative, my mother-in-law I told you about. And both, both my father-in-law and mother-in-law noticed that I've lost some weight. So I was really excited about that. I'm thinking, oh, it, it isn't that much. It's almost five pounds. And I'm thinking, nobody will notice five pounds. Well, on me, because I'm a small person, it's noticeable. The second one that I ordered... Actually, these two are exactly the same, different colors. So I've got a white one, and this material is so soft and nice. It has little eyelets, and it is also the cold shoulder effect. And then I got sage green. And what I like about these two is that they're, they're dressy. So I could wear a sweater with these on a cool night, or if it's really hot, I could wear this out, you know, to do something. Yeah, I'm <laughs> really excited. I, I like them. I like the way they look. I like the way they make my shoulders look. So win-win. Okay, so what are we going to talk about while I put on makeup tonight? Well... I am going to be answering your questions. I already picked out all my makeup. I'm going to be using my stash to put my makeup on, and I'm going to revisit the Tear Tear Foundation. And today I'm going to be using the Ethereal 20 Shade Palette by Profusion. The first question is from Cheryl. Cheryl asked, at what age did you start wearing makeup? Well, when I turned 13 in middle school, my mother allowed me to wear a little bit of mascara and a little bit of blush and some frost or clear lipstick. And that was all I was allowed to wear. I wasn't allowed to wear anything else but that. And I couldn't put a lot of it on. 
Um, I could only just do, you know, the tips of my eyelashes. She didn't want me to really load on the mascara. She didn't want me to really brighten up my cheeks. And I was about 13. When I finally became 16, then that is when I started to really put on makeup, uh, curl my eyelashes, and learn, you know, uh, which colors I liked for eyeshadow. And I would play around with different colored mascaras. And I had two favorite lipsticks that I used to use that I really, really loved. And um, one was a white frost. And the other one was was a frost that had a peach pink tone to it. It was, it, it would shift depending on how you looked in the mirror. And I just love that lipstick. And I cannot remember for the life of me who made that lipstick. But that was my favorite lipstick. Susan asked the question, what do your kids think of your card readings? Well, that's a really, really good question because I honestly don't know the answer to that. <laughs> uh, two of my daughters uh, have requested card readings. Um, and they, they know that I have some kind of a gift because I remember one of my daughters um, telling somebody that, one of her friends, that it was really uncanny that um, mom just kind of knows things. You know, I feel like I can't get get away with anything. She just kind of knows things. And um, actually, one of her friends came to me for a card reading. Um, and then I have another daughter who's very interested in that kind of thing. All of my kids were raised in a Christian home. And, um, and they're all very the girls, even my son is very intuitive. Um, of course I have a stepson, so, um, I can't speak for him, but I know it doesn't bother him. He might think it's a little loopy, but he's never really said anything to me about it. And I think they, I don't think they like me displaying the fact that I do. But how else am I going to do it? You know, I mean, the word has to get out there somehow. And now that they're getting older and they have, you know, they're, they're, they have relationships and families of their own, they are much better at accepting that mom is a person too. So, yeah, I, I, that's the best way that I can answer that question. The next question is, Elizabeth asked, what inspired you to start a YouTube channel? I'm going to be 100% honest. I was inspired to start a YouTube channel because I really like being an orator. I really like talking to a wide audience of people, even though I'm all by myself in the house. And I thought that I would be able to talk about all the subjects that interested me, play with makeup in a creative way, um, do card readings, and eventually, as you know, I'm going to be doing a Soul Aura live on my channel. Well, it's not going to be live. I'm going to do do the soul aura and tape it and then upload it. 
and one of you will be the recipient of that because I'm going to do a giveaway. But that's after I reach the 24,000 subs. And quite frankly, I wanted to do card readings, but I didn't want to just do card readings. Now I look at a lot of channels with readers and I mean, some of them started a year after I did and they've already got close to a hundred thousand subscribers. And that's because everybody wants to know the future. Everybody wants to know what's going to happen in the future. And I don't like to do those kinds of card readings. It doesn't help people. Predictive card readings do not help people. What helps people is everyday living guidance. And that's what's most important. I guess the inspiration was my kids. A couple of my kids told me that I should start a YouTube channel because I have so much to say and that I'm creative. And one day I just started taping myself and decided I can put this on YouTube and I can, you know, I had already, I already had a channel. <clears throat> but the name was used by other people. So I decided I'm going to make it so that nobody will have this name. <laughs> because if you type a light fragments Oracle in Google search, then my YouTube channel will come up. There is no other one. And so I just decided to take a chance and I taught myself. I taught myself all I of it. I didn't have anybody that could teach me. So that was the inspiration. The inspiration basically was wanting to help people and <clears throat> wanting to discuss in, a, in an open forum, you know, even though there's nobody here, there you're all here. And I thought it would be a great way to get started doing that. Next question. Yolanda asked, what do you do for a living? Well, that's kind of a loaded question because I've done so many things. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've done so many things. I do better self-employed because I can pick and choose my own hours. And I got into the habit of working that way because I did not want to pay for childcare. So I started a small business and that small business, I used to hand paint clothing. And then I had a couple of houses that I could walk to, to clean or I cleaned my mother's house while she was still working. And um, yeah, I mean, whenever I had a job working at a corporation or whatever, I mean, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the company. I enjoyed being around people, but I just couldn't, I couldn't work it in my schedule with my kids. You know, childcare was more expensive than what I made in a week, basically. So I decided to stay home. And then after my husband passed away, I applied for an art teacher job, but I went to school to be a graphic artist. And I was a graphic artist for a little over a year. Okay, now I'm gonna put on my foundation. You, it covers the whole pad. So I'm just gonna kinda you're supposed to press this, but I'm going to do this a little differently because the last time I put this on, 
I had put so much of it on, I didn't like the way it felt on my skin. So I'm dabbing this like this. It still smells like gin and tonic. <laughs> now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a foundation brush. These are all clean. I cleaned about 30 brushes. I have a lot of brushes, so I don't have to clean them all the time. And I'm going to use this to spread the tear tear. But let me tell you something, you have to do it fast because it dries very quickly. That's the whole reason for patting it on. It dries really, really quickly. And if I have any sketchy marks, Okay, I need to look at this. This stuff is so amazing. Oh my gosh. I've never used a foundation like this before in my life. I'm going to take, there's still some on here, see? I'm going to take this and I'm going to go over my spots. I mean, I'm starting to get tan. See my neck? See my shoulders? I'm starting to get tan, so it really is very light for my skin, but that's okay. I can warm it up. Okay, I hope that answers your question. What I do for a living now is once I stop teaching art, for 11 years, I started a residential cleaning business, and I've been doing that for 20 plus years. It'll be 21 years in February that I have been doing that, and I like it um, because other things challenge me now. I like to read. I like to look things up on the internet. I like to study. I like to be creative around my house in my yard um and so i can do those things and still bring an income into the house it worked out for the best it really did so that's what i do amanda asked do you get along well with your children you don't talk about your boys very much. Well, you know how it is. Girls, girls talk, girls talk. And uh, my sons, yes, I get along really well with them. My stepson is very respectful to me. He treats me really well. He's never been disrespectful. He's a great kid. Um, he's had his share of challenges, but haven't we all? My son, that my husband and my son together, um, we have, I think we have a great relationship. He, but he's, you know, he's getting up there in age and he's got a girlfriend now and he works a lot of hours every week and he's living his life. And so, you know, he was a, he was just a crazy little boy. You know, and he always wanted to do things. He always wanted to be active. And he still is that way to this day. So um, I, I'm really blessed. I'm, I'm really blessed to have the children that I have. I, you know, look, uh, they had to go through their stuff in life, just like I had to go through my stuff in life. And they all turned out so good. Not without trials, but they all turned out so good. And I'm really blessed. I mean, just that, I feel abundant. So, my oldest just turned 42. <laughs> and my youngest, which is my son, is going to be 29 in November. So, yeah. 
I feel really blessed. Thank you for asking that. Okay, next question. Layla asked, what do you do about family members who intentionally ghost you, then at family functions act as if everything is fine? And when she talked about ghosting, like, you know, you text them and then they don't respond to any of your texts. Um, I don't know. I'm older now and I... I don't think that I get hurt like I did when I was younger. When I was younger, if I were to call my sisters and they wouldn't pick up the phone or, you know, we didn't have texting back then. But I mean, my younger sister, she's technologically minded. She texts a lot, but my oldest sister doesn't text very much. <laughs> so there's that. But, um, what do I do? Well, years ago, I probably would have had a crying jag over it. And I probably would have been feeling like I didn't matter. And, you know, what's wrong with me? But today, if, if they were to show up at a function and act as if everything is okay, then that would be fine with me. I would assume that it's not me. It's whatever's going on in their life. And if it is me and they don't have the courage to tell me that it's me, that's on them. That's not on me. That's on them. You know, there is a saying, and I do agree with it. When I remember when I first heard it, I thought... I don't think I can do that. Well, I definitely know I can do that now. What other people think of me is none of my business. And you know what? That's the truth. And when you start to live your life like that, you will learn real quickly how to let stuff like that roll right off your shoulders if it's good friends or family members, I mean, you're still going to have the emotions. You're still going to be thinking, but it passes so quickly. And it's kind of like, whatever, you know. Uh, what do I do today? I don't do anything. I pray for them because I do love them despite, despite it all. I love them. That's unconditional love. And love isn't giving people things. Love isn't um, constantly, chronically being codependent. When love is unconditional, no matter what that someone does or says to you or behaves towards you, it's feeling the hurt but loving them anyway. It is possible. I'm going to tell you of all of all of my bronzers, and I don't have that many, and I've thrown a few away in my, my uh, trash bin that I will show you at the end of the year, depending on how much I've used. This is my absolute favorite. It's by Believe Beauty. I've had it for a while. Sunstruck Marbleized Bronzer, uh, the shade Golden Sienna. It's a neutral. It's neutral. It's not that orangey bronze that I don't like or that orangey brown. It's beautiful. It's neutral. I'm actually going to pick myself up another one of these because there's a nice big dent in the middle and I'm probably going to hit pan soon. But this is my favorite, my favorite bronzer. I'm not, I don't have a lot of bronzers. Okay, next question. Leandra asked, what are the symptoms of menopause um, pertaining to a hysterectomy? Well, I've never had a hysterectomy, but... 
I know people that have, and I know people that were pushed into menopause. I mean, it just pushes you into menopause. And it, your body doesn't have a really have a chance to ease in like the natural osmosis of menopause. But what I experienced was night sweats. Like I would wake up ringing wet, particularly around my neck, my shoulders and down my chest. Um, one night I remember waking up and my legs were soaking wet and this could be in the dead of winter. Um, I could walk outside at 20 below and not even feel that it was 20 below. Um, I started to get panic attacks. Um, those came during perimenopause, which is approximately 10 years before the actual menopause, that's when I started getting um, panic attacks. And I didn't know they were panic attacks. I thought I was having a heart attack. Um, and I thought that, you know, it was that fight or flight thing that goes on. Um, I was exhausted all the time. It was like my, I just had no energy. I was always exhausted. Um, I don't feel like I didn't have any of that. I'm going crazy feeling, but my life felt out of control and it probably felt out of control because I was out of control. My body was going through a metamorphosis. Um, trying to think of what else that I went through. Um, originally it would be like, you know, one month I would have my period for two days and then, then I'd skip a month and then the next month I'd go two weeks having my period and then the next month I wouldn't have any. And then it was like that. It was really erratic for about six or seven months and then it just stopped. I'm trying to think. I mean, I, I had some really bad hormonal changes when I was... Uh, in my 20s and um, I had an, a hormonal imbalance so going through that menopause was a piece of cake for me uh, but I did ask a lot of questions people that you know I could could ask these questions to that's about it but I would expect oh I had insom some insomnia like um, the anxiety and then I couldn't sleep and then the next day I'd be dog tired and then the next night I would fall asleep really early, want to go to bed early and it was just, everything was just so erratic. But it, it all levels out. Like I'm still warm. I still get warm really easy, but nothing like when I went through menopause. And I, I can't even remember if I had what had a hot flash. I would get flush. Um, like I stopped drinking wine. I love a glass of wine. I stopped drinking wine because it flushes me still to this day. <laughs> so I never took hormone replacement therapy. I never took it. Okay, next question. Caroline asked, I know you get messages for people you see person to person. But how does it work at a distance on your channel? I think that that is my favorite question. Because I am so used to being able to see, they say, beyond the veil. And it really is seeing beyond the veil. Uh, somebody asked me, well, how do you see auras? And... It, it's kind of like <laughs> my eyes literally don't turn inward, but it's like I do have eyes on the inside of my head and I see the person sitting in front of me or a picture of the person in front of me. And then this all gets blocked off and it's like I'm seeing up and over. 
And when I get messages for people, like if I'm doing a face-to-face -face reading, it's the same kind of thing. I see their face, but I'm hearing up and over. It's, it's getting in the flow, getting in the stream of consciousness that allows you to be open to get those messages. Now, with like when I've done a couple of one card pick a card lives, what I go by is the person's name, the energy of that person that's attached to that name goes into my stream of consciousness. Okay, so before I go on and do the live, I've already put myself in that stream of consciousness, even though outside I'm talking. But inside, I'm in that stream of consciousness. And that's where everything lives. Everything. Every prayer, every thought, every attitude, behavior, what's going on, it all lives in there. And it can be dangerous to, in, to a point because you are opening yourself up to that. But I always protect myself with my guardian angels and with God and ask for Archangel Michael and I ask for protection. And so I will connect with that person's name and the energy behind that name. And when I flip a card... I can automatically, since I'm already in that stream of consciousness, consciousness, get that message. And I don't like to do predictions because everybody has a free will and everybody has a choice they can make. I don't like yes or no answers either. I don't like yes or no answering yes or no questions for that reason, because like I said, if that person takes their will and decides to do the, the absolute opposite of what might have been shown me, they can turn around and say, well, you're wrong. And that happens all the time. Okay, technically I am because they have a free will and they use their free will to make a different choice. So card reading is not supposed to be for predictions, but it's so popular. It's supposed to be for inner guidance to bring you to that place of awakening where you become open to that stream of consciousness for yourself to make the correct choices for yourself. And that's the kind of card reading that I do. I had a, a woman that came to me. Uh, I did a soul aura and, and I do readings with the soul auras. And she asked me a bunch of questions. And I was, you know, her energy was really off. And it was getting very confusing for me. And I will never do this again. I learned from this experience as a reader. I just quickly told her what it was that she wanted to hear. Um, because I thought the potential was there for, yes, this to happen. But when she walked out, I knew that it wasn't going to. I knew that she was going to make different choices. And what she did was she turned around and she tried to slander my name and and told people that I was a fake, <laughs> which, I don't know, there's nothing fake about me. Um, and one of the reasons why card readers get a bad rap is because you know, we all have an intuition. 
we all have the ability, but not everybody wants to tap into that ability. That's why there are so many people that go to card readers and a handful of card readers that really know what they're doing. And so what I like to tell people when they come to me is to have an open mind, you know, take what they need from the reading and leave the rest. Take what you need and leave the rest. And that's the best way to be because I don't profess to be God. I'm strictly doing this for guidance. So that's how I do it. Yeah, that's how I do it. It's, it's very strange. And sometimes, you know, when I see this veil, so to speak, and I'm looking up and over, sometimes I even see words or names. And like, like, let's just say I see the name Glenn. Okay. And, you know, do you know a Glenn? I will say. Sometimes I'll just see a G or a GL and I, I have to make that, you know, in my mind, I have to ask real quickly, well, what, what is that? So say the name is Glenn. Well, do you know a Glenn? Nope. I don't know a Glenn. I can't think of a Glenn. I don't know a Glenn. Well, that in the stream of consciousness, not everything is happening right now. It could have happened and it could be happening in the future. And that person could meet somebody by the name of Glenn and that they could be offered a job, say, or their boss's name in the future could be Glenn and they get a raise or whatever. They may remember or they may not. But that doesn't mean that that name wasn't there. So it's, it's, um, it's difficult in a sense. I mean, I love doing it. I would do it full time. I would do it full time. But I don't have the means to do that. I don't want people coming to my home. Um, you know, if I got enough readings to do every, every day, that I could do like via um, Zoom or I could do them on FaceTime or Meetup or whatever, I would do them. And people could just pay me through PayPal. Um, I would quit my day job. <laughs> I would. So just keep that in mind if you want me to, to do that. But th that's it. I had eight questions. I'm going to put the rest of my makeup on. I'm going to come back and we're going to flip a card and call it a day. Okay, my friends, this is the finished look. We're going to end this video with an angel inspiration card. This is a general. Pick a card for this week. Let's see what the angels want. Want Everyone that meanders onto my channel to know, you know I love all of my subscribers and I love anybody that comes onto my channel. Whoa. Archangel Uriel. Archangel Uriel was one of the very first angels that I worked with. And I had an incredible experience. Uh, I was working with this angel. And I woke up in the middle of the night one night and hovering in my bedroom was this huge golden globe of light. It looked like the sun but it was just kind of about the size of a basketball and it was just kind of hovering, you know, in, in beyond the headboard, above the headboard, beyond it, like just, and then 
I closed my eyes and when I opened my eyes, it was gone. Um, Archangel Uriel is a very powerful angel. Let me see here. There are four major angels that stand, I believe, on the four corners of the earth. But they can also stand in front, you know, one in front of you, one behind you, one to the left of you, one to the right of you. And that is Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, Archangel Raphael, and Archangel Uriel. The four major archangels. There are others, but those are the four major. Archangel Uriel, wisdom, creativity, and intellect. Uriel means fire of God. And that round ball that I saw was like a big ball of fire. That's, that's how powerful the angels are. And I was calling on Uriel for a lot of things. Uriel's wisdom and guidance is gentle and subtle, yet powerful. He assists you to find solutions to all areas in your life where you may have become stuck. He works on a subconscious level via your psyche and often brings you your answers in the form of clear seeing or clear knowing messages. Whenever you need assistance with problem solving or brainstorming, he is the angel to call upon. Archangel Uriel's positive guidance always encourages you to listen to your own inner voice once you have chosen to follow your inner knowing in a situation uriel will be with you every step of the way guiding your path with the light and the fire of god and that is a collective angel for this video and for this week okay my friends be well be blessed be beautiful because you are, because there is nobody else on the planet like you. You are loved, you are special, and you're not forgotten, even if you feel like you might be. There are billions of possibilities waiting for you. Open your mind to them. Until we see each other again, you know I love ya. Mwah.